Sehr geehrte Frau Vorsitzende, Madam Chairman, Rapporteur Christoph Furrer, esteemed members of the committee, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you today our special report on tackling fraud in EU cohesion spending. Let me start with some statistics. Between 2013 and 2017, the Commission and the Member States identified more than 4,000 potentially fraudulent irregularities. The EU support affected by these irregularities amounted to some 1.5 billion euros, 72 of them of which concerns cohesion policy. This means that while cohesion policy represents around one-third of the EU budget, it accounts for nearly three-quarters of the total sums involved in all reported cases of fraud. In the area of cohesion, the Member States' managing authorities are responsible for putting proportionate and effective measures in place to address identified risks of fraud. These measures should cover the entire fraud management process by developing anti-fraud policies, assessing fraud risks, implementing prevention and detection measures, coordinating with other parties involved in the fight against fraud and responding to detecting fraud, a process which also involves reporting cases. During our audit, we focused on the managing authorities and assessed whether they have pro properly fulfilled their responsibilities throughout the whole anti-fraud management process. Overall, we found that the managing authorities did make improvements in identifying fraud risks and designing preventive measures, but they still need to strengthen fraud detection, response and coordination. Let me now explain our observations in greater detail in the actual order of the fraud management process. First, as far as assessing the risk of fraud is concerned, we did find improvements. The managing authorities assessed fraud risk better for the 2014-2020 programming period, although some of their assessments were not sufficiently thorough and many member states have no specific anti-fraud policy at all. Second, in the area of fraud prevention and detection, the picture is mixed. We saw that the managing authorities had improved their fraud prevention measures, but had made no significant progress in terms of proactive fraud detection. In particular, data analytics were underused for fraud detection, and we also often noted a lack of procedures for monitoring and evaluating the impact of prevention and detection measures. Lastly, in the area of fraud response, we found several weaknesses. Member States were not responsive enough to all detected cases of fraud. In particular, several managing authorities do not systematically communicate suspicions of fraud to the competent bodies, such as inv investigation or prosecuting bodies, and coordination with other parties involved in the, fight, in the fight against fraud is insufficient. Moreover, corrective measures often have a limited deterrent effect and the functions of the anti-fraud coordination services are insufficiently defined. In addition, the fact that cases are underreported affects the fraud detection rates published by the European Commission. For example, we found that the Commission's 2017 report on the protection of the EU's financial interest is not a true representation of the level of fraud actually detected, but rather an indication of the fraud cases that Member States decided to report to the Commission. Finally, I should like to draw your attention to the recommendations we make in our special report, which are addressed to the Member States and to the Commission. These include recommending that Member States should develop formal strategies and policies to combat fraud and improve detection measures by using data analytics tools as a matter of course. We also recommended that the Commission should urge 
the managing authorities to communicate all cases to appropriate bodies and that it should encourage member states to expand the functions of their anti-fraud coordination services. In conclusion, I should like to point out something towards the end of our report. In para 81, 88 and 90, we draw co-legislators' attention to several issues which could not raise, uh, which we could not raise with the Commission due to the state of the CPR negotiations. In para 81, we point out that, the, that during the negotiation and approval of procedure for the common provision regulation, co-legislators could consider making compulsory the adoption of national strategies or anti-fraud policies. In para 88, we highlight that the use of proper data analytics tools to improve the fraud detection could also made, be made compulsory. Lastly, in para 90, we point out that co-legislators could also consider the possibility, as in other policy areas, of introducing specific sanctions and penalties for those responsible for fraud against the EU financial interest. These sanctions could include proportionate monetary penalties or exclusion from EU funding for a specific period. It would be, a very, help, it would be very helpful if the above issues could be taken into consideration during the CPR negotiations. Many thanks for your attention.